Hi, John Sarton here with the Rio Grande Jewelry Tech Team. Today I'm here to talk to you about the L80 Hydrogen Torch. I'm going to show you how to set it up and a little bit on use. You might notice that this unit looks a little bit different than uh, the unit that you received. Uh, this unit we have actually had in our tech studio now for probably seven years. Um, so it does look a little bit different. There were some design changes with the newer unit. The knob here uh, to tighten your booster tank and also your pressure tank knob. But other than that, the machine works exactly the same way. Um, so in your kit, you should have got the unit itself, a booster tank, uh, a set of tips, uh, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, and 0.8 millimeter, a funnel, uh, two hoses and two torch handles. Additionally, in uh, the package you should have a owner's manual as well as a USB that has a digital owner's manual and also some videos on it. You're going to need the uh, uh, potassium hydroxide. Uh, this is a Rio dry mix. It's 360 grams. This is the exact amount that you need for the L80. So whenever you mix up your electrolyte solution, it's going to be this entire container. You need to get uh, Hydroflux flux solution. Um, this is a uh, boric acid, so if you already use boric acid, then you uh, certainly can use the, the, uh, what you have. You need methyl alcohol. Methyl alcohol is what you're going to be mixing with your boric acid, and uh, you cannot substitute any other alcohol. Methyl alcohol is, uh, is required for this unit. You're also going to need uh, a pitcher that is uh, that is going to be heat resistant. It needs to withstand uh, the temperature of boiling water. Um, along with uh, one liter of uh, distilled water. Um, this, whenever the hydroflux solution is mixed, it does get very hot. There is an exothermic reaction that does happen. Um, so the container that you use and uh, whatever you use to stir it with, either a glass rod or a stainless steel spoon um, uh, needs to withstand that heat. Uh, uh, also, along with it, uh, you need to have some vinegar uh, available. Uh, if you do have any spills of the electrolyte solution, uh, the vinegar will neutralize that solution. Additionally, you need to read all of the uh, safety precautions for uh, personal protective equipment uh, in the SDS sheets that can be found on our site attached to uh, both the, uh, the Rio dry mix and the methyl alcohol and the boric acid. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to mix up uh, my solution and then uh, we'll be right back. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and assemble the machine. So I'm going to attach the torch handles to the machine. The torch handle, it comes with a small knob or a, uh, a nut and uh, you're going to shove the hose up onto the fitting and then secure it with the nut. You don't want to over tighten this, so just finger tight. Um, like they say, uh, human tight, not ape tight. Um, and I'm going to attach the second hose and torch. Now you can see that, uh, that this has a cutoff, so you can, you can actually shut this torch off and only use the one torch. This is another slight design change um, without, the, without this fitting on the new torches. Again, just nice finger tight. You don't need a wrench to do this. Um, you just need to make sure that they're tight. Like I said, the electrolyte solution, it does have an exothermic reaction and it, it gets very hot. So we need to let that cool down. So in the meantime, I, uh, I went ahead and I mixed uh, 15 grams um, of boric acid, uh, the, the flux solution. Um, I weighed it out on a scale and then I just uh, put it into the bottle and shook it up. So uh, this, is, uh, this is mixed and ready to go. Um, so now we need to, since the solution, electrolyte solution is uh, cooled down, we need to go ahead and uh, put it into the machine. Plug your machine in 
and then uh, flip this switch. Um, you see that there is a, uh, it's a, it's a two-way switch. Uh, down is the fill position, up is the run position. So flip this down. Now, the way that you're going to fill the machine is you're going to slowly start adding the electrolyte solution until um, these lights just turn red, okay? This is an indication that you need to fill your machine. Um, so as you are using the machine, you are going to be going through electrolyte solution, but it's really, it's just depleting the uh, water that's in the solution. So you need to actually add more distilled water instead of a, a complete electrolyte solution. So after your first mix of electrolyte solution, you're just going to add distilled water to top the, the tank off. This will let you know when you need to do that. Um, it will turn amber whenever it's at a, at a minimum and then you will uh, fill it up like I'm going to do here in just a second until this light just turns red. So let's go ahead and, uh, and start filling this machine up. So I'm going to pull the safety cap off, put my funnel in, and I'm gonna start to pour the solution into the machine. Now you're going to want to watch the lights because you don't want to overfill this. So um, watch the lights carefully and right whenever it turns red, you want to stop. That's going to be approximately uh, one liter of the solution. So you should use almost all of what you have mixed up. Um, again, you don't want to, you don't want to overfill it. Um, wait until that light just pops red and then stop pouring and you're ready to go on to the next step. So now I'm going to take a pressure cap and I'm going to put it back onto the machine. This again, don't, don't go over tight. Um, it will pretty much come to a dead stop and that's, that's really where you want, it, want to stop with it. And now we're going to put our methyl alcohol and flux into our booster tank. Uh, to do that, you don't want to get flux solution down into this center hole. So you just want to cap that off. So I just do it by this. Take a gloved hand, just put my thumb over the hole, and then I will start to pour in the solution. Um, you can see on the outside of the booster tank, you have a maximum and a minimum. So you need to judge just by looking down into the booster tank where your level's at. You don't want to go above this maximum line. So I'm going to go ahead and start to fill this up. Okay, that looks good. The booster tank then attaches to this stud. So push it up there and tighten this up. Again, just tight. You don't want to over tighten that. Um, and now you're actually ready to start the machine up and, uh, and let it generate. So you need, to, you need to let this generate for about five minutes um, just, to, just to get the, uh, get the gases flowing. Um, so to do that, just push this up into the on position. Turn your dial down to zero and let it generate for, like I say, about five minutes or so. You're gonna hear the fan kick on, so you do know that the machine is actually functioning. Um, so I'm gonna let this generate for uh, a few minutes and then uh, I'll be right back. So I'm just gonna set it on four um, and, uh, and then I can actually See if I can feel some air. Yep, there is actually a flow of hydrogen coming out of the tip. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and remove these since I don't need them any longer. Uh, a good accessory for this machine is actually the torch holder. This does not come with the machine. Um, it is sold separately. So uh, it's good to have that, that torch holder. Um, if you look right here at this little gauge here, it's showing you that you are running. Um, I've got the power setting at four and it's showing 40, OK? 
Okay, so that's basically 40 liters per hour is the output of this machine right at this point. And so that's another uh, indication of uh, that you do have flow through the machine. Okay, um, so again, I've got flow. I'm going to go ahead and light it. Okay, so this is the smallest tip. This is a 0.6. It is uh, at a number four power rating. I can go ahead and turn that down. I never like using the bottom number on the power ratings because it's just getting too close um, to, to a point where you might start burning tips. And I'll show you, uh, show you that here in just a little bit. But, uh, but you can see that uh, the power rating, the uh, flame is slowly decreasing. And right there is a number four tip on a power rating of two. I'm going to go ahead and turn it on up to seven. We're going to let that go ahead and adjust out, and regulate. And there is a power rating of seven with the 0.6 millimeter tip. So that's a really good tip. Uh, doing smaller work, uh, fine chain repair, things such as that. Um, now let's go ahead and switch out tips, but let's talk about the torch itself. So this torch constantly has hydrogen running through it. Um, you saw that I was testing the flow uh, on my hand to make sure that we had gas. Uh, this torch handle does not shut off. Uh, so it doesn't have a valve here that you can turn. So to shut this torch handle off, you're going to uh, grab the bottom of this stem and you're going to shove it straight up. It's a spring-loaded valve and what that does is it just cuts the, the fuel flow off and extinguishes the flame. There is actually still hydrogen running through this tip. Okay, um, so let's go ahead and put the next larger tip on. This is 0.7. I'm going to reduce my pressure. Um, the 0.7 uh, works best at power ratings between three and nine. So I'm gonna reduce my pressure down to four. Um, if you try to light this, I can show you, if we turn this up to um, say eight, and you try to light it, there's a lot of pressure going through that little tip. And basically it's blowing out the flame before it gets lit. So go ahead and turn this down to a four. Let that pressure regulate. And now you can go ahead and light that tip. Okay, so this is the, uh, this is the medium sized tip on a number four. Now I'll go ahead and turn that up to almost nine. All right. So you've got, a, uh, you've got a pretty nice sizable flame with this tip. We'll go ahead and uh, switch out the last tip. Um, so what I like to do is I actually like to turn this back a bit, back to about four, and then I'm going to extinguish the flame. So I'm just gonna push in, extinguishes the flame, and I will put on the next size tip. Now this is, uh, this is running at a power rating of four, and this is the 0.8 millimeter tip. And now I just turned it up to the max, which is nine, and that is what you're going to get out of a number nine tip. And that is how you start a, uh, that's how you uh, light your torches. I'm gonna go ahead and shut that off. Now, this is a dual torch system. So the second torch, I told you, has a valve. And you can run this torch um, with, uh, with only one torch, or you can run it with two. Uh, if you're running it just one torch at a time, go ahead and shut this valve off, because whenever you're splitting the power between two torches, that power is going to be decreased. Um, so to, uh, to operate your second torch, you're going to turn this so that that handle is in line with the hose. And that is going to say that now you've got fuel flow to this hose. 
This is the same concept as the other one where you are going to put a tip on it. Make sure that there is fuel flow. Now, whenever you first open up uh, any of these, uh, this, this hose, ready to do a, a, another ho uh, tip or another torch, um, there will probably be atmospheric air in this hose, so you're not going to be able to light it straight away. You're going to have to let that hydrogen push that atmospheric air out of this hose before you can light it. Okay, so now we've got, uh, got this lit. So there is a uh, 0.7 tip uh, at a power rating of uh, looks like 8. Um, and both of the torches are actually running at the same pressure. So you have almost identical flames. Remember, always, always, whenever you shut these off, always shut these this torch off uh, through the handle itself. So let's extinguish that and let's extinguish that. If you don't do that and you just reach over to the machine and you shut the machine off, you cause what's called a back, uh, flashback. Um, that is when the flame will actually crawl back through the handle, through the hose and to the machine. Um, and that, that does cause some problems. Uh, there is a safety device on this that I'll talk about uh, in the maintenance it video. Um, but, uh, but you need to just make sure that you don't create those flashbacks. Now, remember I told you I was gonna show you how you can, how you, uh, if you run a pressure too low that you're going to burn your tips. Um, let's go ahead and create that. I'm going to light it. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to turn this back um, to, uh, to where it's generating too little of fuel. Um, so this is the uh, 0.7 tip, so that was a 3 to 9 power rating. So I'm going to turn this back to, I'll just go ahead and turn it back to 1.5, one, 1. You can see that it is, uh, the flame is starting to decrease. Um, you're also going to see here in just a minute that the tip will start to get really hot and it'll start to glow. You can actually see that right now. It's just starting to glow. I'm gonna go ahead and shut this off now because I don't wanna create a flashback. Um, if I would've let that continue, that would actually crawl back through the hose to the machine. Uh, if you run these tips too low, you will burn these tips out. Uh, you can actually melt the tips down right, uh, right into the plastic. So, uh, so always make sure that you're running this at uh, the power ratings that are suggested uh, for the tips. And uh, as far as I'm concerned, I like running it uh, at least one uh, higher than the lowest power rating for the tip. Okay, so that is uh, the general basics of, uh, of, of setting up the torch. I hope this information has been helpful. And if you have any questions, please give us a call. We're here to help.